Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into something super important for anyone into structural engineering, how much a steel beam can bend. Trust me, you'll want to know this, whether you're a pro or a newbie. So, let's get into it. Alright, so you've got this beam, and you're wondering, how much can this thing bend? Great question. According to British Standard BS5950, you've got two main rules. First, if your beam is holding up something that can break easily, like plaster, your limit is the span divided by 360. Simple, right? Second, for all other beams, it's the span divided by 200. But hold on, these are just starting points. Sometimes you've got to be more careful. Like, if your beam is holding out glass or a door, aim for a span divided by 500. Okay, you've got your rules, but how do you know if your beam is behaving? You'll need to measure the real-world bending or actual deflection. For a spread-out load, take 5 divided by 384, multiply it by the weight in newtons, and then by the span cubed in millimeters. Divide all that by some constants, and you're good. For a load right in the middle, it's similar. 1 divided by 48, multiply by the weight in newtons, and then by the span cubed in millimeters. Divide that by the same constants, and you're golden. Oh, and by the way, those constants I mentioned. For steel sections, the modulus of elasticity. E is 205,000 newtons per square millimeter, and I is the second moment of area, which you can find in section tables. All right, let's get into a real-world example. Imagine a beam with a span of 8 meters supporting 25 kilonewtons spread out and 106 kilonewtons right in the middle. The beam's dimensions are 457 times 191 times 82 kilograms per meter, and its second moment of area I is 37,100 centimeters to the power of 4. First up, what's the maximum permissible deflection? Take 8,000 millimeters and divide it by 360, giving us 22.22 millimeters. We don't want to exceed that. For the UDL, start with 5 divided by 384 and multiply that by 25 kilonewtons. Remember to multiply by 1,000 to convert it to newtons. Next, multiply by 8,000 millimeters cubed. Now, divide all of that by 200 and 5,000 newtons per square millimeter. For the moment of inertia, which is 37,000, 100 centimeters to the power of 4. Don't forget to multiply it by 10 to the power of 4 to convert it to millimeters to the power of 4. And what do we get? A deflection of 2.19 millimeters. For the concentrated load of 106 kilonewtons, it's similar. Take 1 divided by 48, multiply by 106 kilonewtons times 1000, and then by 8,000 cubed. Divide that by the same constants, and you get 14.87 millimeters. So, what's the bottom line? Add those two deflections. 2.19 millimeters plus 14.87 millimeters equals 17.06 millimeters. And guess what? That's under our limit of 22.22 millimeters. So, our beam is more than adequate. And that's a wrap, folks. Understanding steel beam deflection isn't just for the experts. It's something we all should know if we're dealing with structures. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe for more engineering insights. Until next time, take care.